Hallelujah. Greetings to all of you in the master's name of my Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm so happy, so excited, and honored to be worshiping with you. It's a joy to be in the presence of the children of God. When two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. I thank God for the presence of God. I visited Chicago City many years back, but today I'm so happy because I'm worshiping with this particular church and all of you here. Many of you are very precious to me and many of you have been praying for me and our family and I thank God for each one of you. Let me begin my message by saying I thank God for the man of God, Pastor Stephen, who is just, uh, serving God in this city and in this church as your pastor. As he mentioned, he's, his grandfather was the one uh, who was the pastor who baptized my parents. And I was there as a two-year boy watching that baptism. He was a great man of God. My God is a God of generation. He doesn't Amen. live with one generation. Amen. He takes generation. So our children are very precious. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. One after the other. Our God is a God of generation. He doesn't finish the work with you. He continues through your children. My God is a God of generation. When I met the servant of God yesterday or any time and every time, I praise God because I know, I remember in my little brain, his grandfather and he, both of them, such great men of God. I thank God for all the pastors and leaders here. I was happy and excited to be in the youth group in the morning. We enjoyed the time. Yesterday we were in Gida's house and thank God for Gida and family and the meeting we had here, there. Ask, seek and knock in the process of finding God. Amen. And I'm excited because I have my LKG teacher, Shanta Mama, somewhere here, yes. <laughs> she never knew when she was teaching me in LKG that I was going to be a neurosurgeon. Amen. But God knew that. I thank God for her and Shensi. Shensi was worshipping with me in Ludhiana in our church and Church of God Church in Ludhiana, their family. It's so great to see children of God. It's wonderful to worship with you. This morning God is going to bless everyone. Because our God is a great God. Sometimes I may just go off my mind and get so excited that I forget that, you know, we, we are in the presence of the living God. And once you come into the presence of God, you are not going to go back the way you came. You know, as I was preparing the message, the worship was over, the worship was so beautiful, and the young, young lovely lady closed it with the introduction of my message. Let me start with that. Jesus broke all laws of chemistry when he made water into wine. He broke all the laws of physics when he walked on the water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when he raised up Lazarus, he broke all the laws of medicine. Today he is going to break some laws this morning. What a great God we serve. I want you to see this God this morning. Not the speaker, not the messenger, not the message, but God himself. Because he is here. When Isaiah saw the Lord, he realized that he was a sinner. When Isaiah saw the Lord, he realized that he has a mission. You have a mission in Chicago. This church has a mission in Chicago. He is going to start new things. 2019 will be a year of revival. The boundaries will be extending because God has a plan for his You think that you have plateaued in your Christian life? There is no plateauing. Either you are growing up or you are going down. There is no reverse gear for a Christian. Hallelujah. We are like the kangaroos of Africa, Australia, who never goes back, only forward. Keep your knees bent in the presence of God. You will never have a reverse gear. You will be always going forward. Before the main message, I have a five minutes of salad, Jeremiah 33, 3. And then I will go only half an hour, so our message is to be going very fast. Five minutes of salad, Jeremiah 33, 3. And I will go into the main message immediately after that. Can somebody read that for me in English? Jeremiah 33, 3. 
Call to me and I will answer. My God has no ENT problem. He has no hearing aid. He is a God who hears from the depth of the water. He is able to hear your cry this morning. Call to me. Don't call for insurance. Don't call for 911. Don't call for your retirement. Don't call for the doctor's number. Call to Jesus. God is wanting you to have only one number and one number in your telephone. That is the number of Almighty. Devil wants to flood your mobile phone with all the numbers. But morning, evening, and night, let there be one number. The number that Daniel called. The number that Moses called. The number that David called. The number that Elisha called. Call to God. Just one number. You forget about all the other numbers this morning. Call to me. And this, uh, this mobile phone, this machine, will not say not available, call me later. It is busy. No! I will answer you. I will answer you. It doesn't say call me later. It says I will answer you. Will you call him this morning? He is going to answer you. What is the answer? The next verse is the answer. Yes, I will answer you. Not ordinary things in Chicago. Not ordinary things other people see. Not the things of the world. But something supernatural. Can you breathe with me this morning? The rarefied oxygen of the supernatural. Is it flooding this chapel this morning? Are you experiencing the presence of Jesus? show you something. What is that? The great unsearchable things that you do not know. You have finished your BTHM, THM, did everything. But God has something more to show you. You think you are finished with God? No. He is just beginning to show you. Will you open your eyes to see something which you have not known? It says which you do not know which you have never heard before. Not the messages you have been hearing for the last 20 years, but the messages you have never heard. My God has something new, a new manna every morning. Hallelujah. My sheep heareth my voice, and they follow me. If you don't, John chapter 10 verse 27. If you don't hear God's voice, you are totally lost. You may know, you may have a GPS in your car and you may have a computer at home and you may have a Google for everything. But if you don't have the Bible and search for God's knowledge and wisdom, you have nothing. Google gives you information and Bible gives you revelation. Make sure that you have revelation and not information. This morning you are standing in the presence of God for revelation of the Almighty. And God is going to show you something which you have never experienced before. Hallelujah. Shall we come to the main message? Mark chapter 11 verse 22. It's a very simple message, not complicated, not sophisticated, doesn't need, need rocket science or PhD in theology, but very simple. Shall we read, read Mark 11:22? Quickly, please, we have time. Jesus, answering, that to Jesus told the disciples, not the crowd. Jesus told the disciples when Peter said something, he said, what did he say? Have faith in God. That is my message. Have faith in God. You will say, you have come to a Pentecostal church, that also one of the oldest in Chicago, and saying, you're preaching the word which is documentary, elementary. Have faith in God. See, the problem with us are, now I'm going to teach you something. Yesterday I said, seek, no, uh, ask, seek, knock. This is the same process of the same procedure of finding out things. Asking is standing from far, seeking is going after it, knocking is coming at it. It is the same process. Now I'm going to teach you something different today. 
that is believing faith and trust it's the same thing the churches are full of believers but no faithful nobody is faithful everybody remains at the belief it says have faith in God it doesn't say believe in God even the devil believes in God nothing great to believe in God nothing great to believe in the Bible nothing great to believe that you are nice believing doesn't help most of us are believers that is the problem the churches are creating believers but no faithful hello Amen. very simple message no complication no rocket science, no PhD. Jesus said only one word. It says, have faith in God. Now, what is the difference between believe and faith? In Malayalam, both are Vishwasam, so they don't understand. <laughs> so that is why all are Vishwasis. Now, I am talking about disciples who move from faith, belief to faith. Amen. When you have faith, you become a disciple. When you are believing, you are part of the crowd. You listen to everything. Wow, wonderful message. Oh, Dr. Kane, neurosurgeon, nice. Oh, very good thing. I knew him. I knew his message. I saw his YouTube. Everything is good. But that is only believing. Faith is little more. That is becoming a disciple. When you start believing in Jesus, you don't become a disciple. But when you have faith in him, you become a disciple. What is that? Obeying, following and experiencing obeying following and experiencing moving from belief to faith you start obeying following and experiencing so jesus said have faith now let me take you a little more and verse 23 next verse for verily i say unto you verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain this mountain be thou removed yes and be thou cast in the sea. Yes. And shall not doubt in his heart. No doubts. So what destroys our faith no. is doubts. Amen. No doubts. Most of us will pray. Let it happen. If it doesn't happen also, it's okay. I'm just praying. At least I have finished my duty. Let this God his business. I'm praying for my children. If they study and pass, very good. I'm just praying. If it doesn't happen, it is God's business. No, no, no. You know, when I landed in Chicago on 16, we had uh, got to some prayer meeting, and day before yesterday, somebody called me and said, there is a child called Simi admitted in Cook County uh, in a ventilator, a very sick condition, peritonitis, perforation, almost dying. I said, God Almighty, I'm going to go on Saturday morning to see this child. I want the child to be extubated speaking to me. Amen. Yesterday, I saw the child extubated speaking to me. <laughs> Believing is different. Faith is action. Amen. Now let me make it simple. Believing, speaking and acting is faith. Amen. Means declaring your belief is faith. Amen. Declaring your belief is faith. Some of you don't even tell your, your colleagues that you are a child of God. In America it's not good to tell your faith. So believers are more, no faithful. You don't even tell the person sitting next to you in the bus. Believing is good. God is great. God helped Moses, Israelites, and also George Cohen. But no faith. Faith is declaring what you believe. From today onwards, you are going to start witnessing in Chicago every day of your life. Hallelujah. 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 I have closed my neuro center to come here to give my testimony. Not a Murkangara, an institution. I have closed the hospital to come and speak. No sensible neurosurgeon will do that. It's not because I enjoy, no, I enjoy my work. I enjoy preaching the word of God. But it is the burden that God has given me. Amen. How many of you are serious with your Christian life? Amen. How many of you want to do real business in the kingdom of God? Start declaring your faith. Amen. Say that you are the child of God to everyone whom you see. Amen. Share your testimony. Amen. Faith has to come by speaking. Very simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you speak to the mountain, what does it say? If you say to the mountain, you look at the mountain and believe in your heart. Is that a, is it written? You look at the mountain and believe in your heart and look at God. Is that the procedure? No. You have to speak. So faith comes in speaking. Amen. 
Why are you not a faithful one? You are not speaking. One simple lesson this morning, tomorrow onwards, you are going to speak the word of God. Speak the testimony of your life. Start sharing the, all the victory that God has given in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No doubt. Fear and doubt destroys your faith. Fear and doubt destroys your faith. Let me go a little more forward, fast, very a little time. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15. Very quickly we must read. Ephesians 1 15. Somebody else, Colossians 1 4. Two, two verses quickly. Ephesians 1 15, Colossians 1 4. So you need to not to have doubt, not to have fear, but believe. And then go forward in faith. Yes. Anybody ready? Read it for me. Yeah, I like to read the verses always. Okay, just for this, for reason, this reason, ever since I heard about your faith, hearing about somebody's faith, ever since I heard about your faith, has anyone heard about your faith? Your faith in Chicago, is it heard? Have people started hearing about your faith? When I was in CMC Ludhiana, I was no, uh, CMC Velon, doing my MCH neurosurgery, I was known as the praying doctor and my number was there in every ward. There was a chaplaincy department, there were five, six priests, there was a big organization, well set up, but still they had my number. Some sisters wrote everywhere, praying doctor George Cover number this. I can even tell you one day I was called to pray in pediatric ward, pediatric uh, medicines uh, ward for a dead child. Is your faith known in Chicago? At least in your home, does your children know? Does your husband and wife know that you have a faith in God? They heard about the faith. Colossians 1.4 Because we heard your faith in Christ Jesus. Because we heard your faith in Christ Jesus. And the love you have for all. So when you have faith in Christ Jesus, you have love for all saints. When I came to Chicago, it was Gida who came in a car to pick me up from the airport. Not because she was my cousin sister, but she had a love for her saints. When you have love for the children of God, you may take an extra effort to do something for them. There was a prophet walking in front of the house. The lady, rich lady, wanted to give him a breakfast, then a lunch. Finally, she thought it would be good that he has a room upstairs. Then the baby came. Then everything went wrong and the baby died. But still the room was not locked and sent away. The dead body of the baby was locked. And then she went out and the servant said, what happened? She said, all is well. She didn't say, my baby is dead and I'm locked up in the room. She went to the husband for a donkey. Husband said, what happened? He said, she said, all is well. She didn't say, I had a mistake. I made a mistake. The prophet came. The baby came. He had a headache. He died. He's in the room. She didn't say that. He said, all is well. She took the donkey and went to the prophet. And the prophet said, why are you here at this time? She said, all is well. Prophet said, no, you are hiding something from me. Even God has not revealed it to me. If you hide your secrets, God will not even reveal it to the prophet. Because God respects the secrecy of your life. But let me tell you, they will want to destroy you. He may declare anything in secrecy, but there is a God who is able to undertake for the dead bodies that are lying in secrecy and making all is well. Keep declaring all is well. Faith is declaring what you believe. Don't say baby is dead. My son is dead. I have kept him in the prophet's room. Say all is well. Hallelujah. That is faith on the donkey. When she walked, she traveled. She went always with the faith in her mind that all is well. Amen. All is well Amen. this morning. Can you say all is well? All, all is, is well with my soul. All is well with my body. Amen. All is well with my family. Amen. All is with, well with my children. Amen. Say all is well. All is well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is going to work a very big miracle when you believe that he has already done it for you. Hebrews 4.2 
doesn't profit if it is not mixed with faith. Many of the time, pastor is preaching. Today morning also, I heard a little bit before I went to the youth meeting. Wonderful message, but people are not mixing. Proper mixing with faith gives profits. When you hear the word and don't mix it and doubt, oh, I know, this is all I've heard. He, I know this person, I know nothing with faith. Then you go back with nothing. You have to mix it with faith. Whenever you hear the word of God, make sure that you mix it with faith so that it will happen to you. Acts 3 verse 16. What faith you should have? The first faith you must begin in your life is in Acts 3 16. So Jesus' name is the one we need to have faith in. What is the faith that we begin with? Jesus' name. In Jesus, I have salvation. In Jesus' name, I have healing. In Jesus' name, I have deliverance. In Jesus' name, my child is going to be all right. In Jesus' name, I am well. No sickness has right on my body. In Jesus' name. The devil is scared of Jesus' name. Pharisees were scared of Jesus' name. The world is scared of Jesus' name. Hell is scared of Jesus' name. Everything works on Jesus' name. Believe in the Jesus' name. There is victory in Jesus' name. Romans 3, 25 and 26. What is the next faith you must have? Romans 3, 25 and 26. God presented Christ as sacrifice of atonement. Yes. Yes. He did this to dem demonstrate his righteousness. Yes. Because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed before him. Faith in the blood of Jesus. Amen. I am cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Devil says you are good for nothing. You say I am cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. I am accept accepted as a child of God in his presence. Amen. Believe that you are justified by him. By faith, faith in Christ. Verse 20, if you go back, it says or something before that, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, yes. there shall no flesh be justified. In if you sight. try justification by work, no flesh shall be justified by work. By the deeds of work, you cannot be justified. Just because you are fasting 40 days, God is not going to give you something special. You can't bribe God. You can't try to beat him in holiness. Because he is holy. Some of us try to compete with God for holiness. The first step of holiness is humility. If you don't have that, even if you are clean shaved, no good, no good. <laughs> humility is the first step of holiness. You can never defeat God for holiness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Let us believe that by our works we can do nothing. It is by grace and grace and grace alone that we are saved. This morning, God is going to bless you because He is merciful. Amen. Not because you and I are good, but because He is faithful. Amen. He is healing yes, you Lord. because He is a healer. Amen. You just have to ask. Amen. You just have to believe. Amen. You just have to trust. Belief, faith, and trust. I don't know whether I reached the level of trust, but let me emphasize a little more on faith. Belief, faith, and trust. Let me go forward in Romans chapter 4, verse 3 and 5. Romans chapter 4, verse 3 and 5. 3, 4, 5. What, for what does the scripture say? Yes. Abraham believed God and he was accounted to him for righteousness. Abraham fasted for 10 days and he became righteous. Abraham did the 10 commandments and he became righteous. Abraham decided to do some ministry, he became righteous. How do you become righteous? He believed in God and that was counted as righteousness. So what counts as your righteousness? You believe in God. Let me tell you, today's morning message is have faith in God. Believe that there is a God who is able to do everything for you. Believe in Him completely, not blindly. Not blindly, no blind faith. Realizing that He is able to do for you. Now, that was counted as righteousness. I have lots of things to say there, but since I have a greater message beyond it, let me jump into the next point. Galatians chapter 3 verse 23. Galatians 3 23. But before faith came. Before faith came. 
So there was something before faith. We are believing it. But before faith came, all our believers, faith has not come. Before faith came, what happened? We were kept under the law. We were kept under the law. We thought that we have to be doing something. We were kept under the law. Shut up. Ah, next verse. Shut up unto the faith. Shut up from faith. Which Always law, 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 law. Shut up from faith. Shut up from faith. At this point, let me tell you, I want to tell you a story. I'm sure you heard this example before. Of a man in Niagara waterfall with the rope across, walking with a cycle, walking with a sack of uh, rice, walking with many things across the Niagara Fall. Then finally he asked, can you somebody offer a volunteer? Everybody believed that he can walk. Everybody knew that he can walk. But nobody wanted to have faith and trust to go into his hands. You need to have that much of trust in God to give fully into his hands. You know God can do miracles. You know God can try, try, do everything for you. But you are still 50-50. God, let me help you. I will all do all these things. Baki, you do. Rest you do. Fully trusting God. Only a little boy came running. He took him up and went across. TV channel, everybody came. Wow, nobody came. How did you come? What made you decide to come? The boy smiled. He said, that was my father. If you have Heavenly Father doing something for you, you will blindly trust Him. Before faith came, faith was completely shut up. Now let's go forward. Verse 22. Sorry, let's go backward. Verse 22. But scripture has locked up everything under the cover of, under the cover of sin. Yes. So everything was locked up under the control of sin. So that what was promised in Jesus Christ, yeah, promised? Being given through faith in Jesus Christ. Through faith in Jesus Christ. All the promises from Abraham to Jesus was locked up in the scripture. When Jesus came, everything is opened up to us. That we live by the promises of the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me say my testimony. Even if I don't say anything else, let me. How many of you haven't heard my testimony? Anybody? All of you have heard my testimony. No, there are still people. Oh, amazing. I thought everybody in the world has heard. I put it in the YouTube five years back thinking that people will hear. But please go to the YouTube. I cannot tell everything. Just type George Kovur and then you will get start with the word of hope, my testimony in English. And then you can proceed from there. But let me tell you in one word. When I was born, I was born as a hydrocophalic baby with a huge head and water inside. I'm sure Shanda Mama must have seen me in that size. <coughs> My parents took me to the doctors, the best doctor in our country, the first neurosurgeon, Dr. Jacob Chandi, and my professor, Dr. J.K. Bergeron. They both said that I will not live. Even if you make me live, I will be physically, mentally retarded, good for nothing. People may talk like that about you, good for nothing, no use, nothing will work. But there is a heaven looking at you differently. When the doors of the doctors closed, my parents knew there was a door upstairs. Amen. Psalm 121 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the heavens. From where does my help come? My help comes from the God who created heaven and earth. They started praying. God spoke to them and said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything shall be added unto you. They left the moment in child with the grandparent, grandmother, took this Bible and went out to preach. The kingdom of God came down to me. Amen. Jesus healed me. Amen. Why am I standing here in Chicago in this church? Because there is a God who can heal a hydrocephalic baby and make him into a neurosurgeon. I can tell you, your faith can move mountains. I can tell you, a miracle is right now in front of you. This God is a Just believe with me. There is nothing too hard for my Jesus. Let me come back to the message. Galatians 3, 25 and 26. Before faith came, something happened. What happened after that? Now, that faith, now that this faith has come. Now the faith has come after the faith. Yes. We are no longer under the You are no longer under the schoolmaster. But what are we? So 
children of God. When we are the children of God, what happens in verse 29? What happens? And if we be Christ, yes. then are we Abraham's seeds. We are Abraham's seeds and, and hired according to the promise. All the promises are ours. In 2002, in a ship in Singapore, when I was traveling, I had a major heart attack. That was so close to me. I said, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'll fear no evil because you are with me. Amen. I live by the promises. Then the doctor took an ECG and he said, you have to be airlifted. You had a massive heart attack. You're going to die. I said, no. I went to the room. The next promise came to me. The promise says, I will not die. I will live to declare the glory of God. Amen. If I had died in the sick, in Singapore, I would not be standing here. I started my hospital after the heart attack. My God has not finished with you. And a heart attack cannot kill you. A disease cannot destroy you. Devil has no right to your life. of God. He will never fail you. Your friends may fail you. Your pastor may not be there sometimes. Your parents may not be there. But my Jesus will never fail you. All you need to know this morning that you are the child of God. If you have anything that is doubting in your mind, thinking that you are not the child of God, make sure that you accept Christ in your heart this morning. And that your name is written in the book of life. That you are the child of God. My time is getting to, I have only two more minutes. So let me come to the last two verses. I'm skipping quickly forward. Matthew 9.2. Matthew 9.2. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said, Jesus saw the faith of the people. Jesus saw the faith of the people. This morning, Jesus is looking at your face. Not to see what cream you have put. Not to see the color of your dress. But to see your heart. How much faith you have. He is looking into your heart this morning to see your faith. God sees your faith. People hear your faith. The world hears your faith. God sees your faith. Many times it is written in the Bible. God saw the faith. Once Jesus said, I have not seen such a faith in the Israel. Can you say about your name that I have not seen anybody in this church with so much faith and so and so. Let your faith be a big faith. Hallelujah. 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 When Corita Boom came back home after a missionary trip, they gave her a big party and one elderly woman went and said you know you are a lady of great faith and Corrington Boom looked at this woman and said no I don't have great faith I have a faith in a great God even if your faith is small today but believe that it is in a great God he will increase your faith finally the disciples are asking Jesus Luke chapter 17 verse 5 and 6 Luke chapter 17 verse 5 and 6 Luke 17. Apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Disciples are asking Jesus. Apostles are asking Jesus, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Faith is not for men for the crowd. Faith is meant for the children of God. Faith is meant for the apostles. Crowd believes. Disciples have faith. Now who has the trust? The son has the trust. I am a son of God. I trust in my God. Amen. I know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Don't remain, remain as a believer. Don't just have faith in God, but completely trust in God. Throw your life fully into God's hand and say, I trust in you. Shall we close our eyes for a word of prayer? Say, Lord, I want to surrender my life into your hands. 
Touch me and transform me. Increase my faith. Lord, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning. We thank you for your word, Master. We bless this church. We bless thy servant. We bless all the ministers here. We pray that you will increase our faith this morning just to trust in you for everything. Trusting not in medicines and doctors and insurance and pensions, but trusting in Jesus and the word of God and the promises of kingdom of God. Thank you for hearing our prayers and answering it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Let me close by thanking Pastor, Pastor Stephen, and all the ministers of this church, and the members of this church. It was an honor and privilege for me to worship with you and share God's word. I request one thing.